Holly, not just a convicted murderer, he's also the ex, right? And as soon as he pled guilty, she divorced him. So now they're yes, saying... that was the this, point I was going to make. This is revenge, mm -hmm. is what they're going to claim. It's a good claim. I look deep into the custody dispute that arose between Cobb and, um, and the victim, and it was extensive. And what does Chad do to people that break up with him and leave him? He punishes them. And he killed his ex-girlfriend. And he did so in a very obvious way, in a very... Um, you know, patterned way in this custody dispute. There were, every month there were filings, protective orders, a no contact order for a year, a court ordered uh, between the murderer and the victim. And it was still violated. So I'm a little bit, I, I, I'm distrusting of Chad because I think that um, the defense has an actually a very good strategy because so far uh, the record for women that have crossed Chad isn't going very well. And when, uh, when Ms. Stefanko divorced him in 2014, um, you know, I, I don't think that, I think he's trying to punish her for that. I, I certainly don't know. And I don't know why this evidence, if it's true, didn't come out at the time of the original arrest of, of Mr. Cobb. So that fact is going to need to be explained to the jury. And I, I definitely think this is a pattern and practice of a, of a high conflict personality in a custody dispute. Watch out for those people, by the way. And um, I'm confused as to why this evidence come, didn't come out earlier. Let's take a listen to uh, the victim's mom who spoke with Court TV today. The justice in this trial is for Ashley, and it's also for my grandbaby. Um, my grandbaby loved her mom, and uh, she should not have had to go through this. We shouldn't have had to go through this. There is no reason for this to happen. I just want everyone to know what a kind person she was and what a great mom she was. My daughter, she was the most gentle person and that you could ever meet. Um, she loved the world. She thought the world was kind and she didn't, she trusted everyone. Her smile, her smile could light up a room. Her kindness, her smile, just her smile. Extremely sad. It always is. Joseph, though, she was talking about her granddaughter. That's Ashley's daughter. She was seven at the time her mom was murdered. She's now 15. She's also scheduled to be the other star witness for prosecutors here. How do you think that's going to go? Well, that all depends on her ability to remember and remember accurately. Now, why are they calling her? Well, it seems to be a horrific thing to do to put that family through this again. But the reason why they're having to call her is because they need something called corroboration. Corroboration is going to be necessary in this case for the government because when you have a witness, a star witness, who has a serious credibility problem in that the defense is going to call him when he probably is, and that is a cheese-eating rat because they cut him a cheese-eating rat deal. So what they now have to do is figure out some way to say, okay, he may have some bias, he may be lying, he may be making it up, he may get some time released, he may be vindictive. What do we have that corroborates his story? Here's the question I have, Henny, and that is, is that because of the other evidence that they do have, namely, they have a videotape of he and Kathleen um, buying this inform or the um, the necessary uh, phone that they used to call Domino's where the gal was working, Ashley Biggs, and then lure her on a fake false pizza delivery so to a secluded abandoned office so that Chad could kill her. In addition, they have some phone calls that the defense tried to keep out because they were jail calls, and the judge says, oh, no, those are recorded. You should have known those are coming in. So they have other corroborating evidence and that's going to leave the defense with the following they have got to say that okay so she may have helped with the phone she may have helped plan it she may have helped with the phone call but the government's gonna have to prove that when she was doing that she knew for a fact that chad was going to kill his former wife and therein lies the problem for everybody and that's probably why they have to call a little girl
without knowing exactly what she's supposed to say, what she's going to say. I can't give you a whole lot as to whether that's a good idea or not, but it's going to be hard. Yep, and we shall see again. Opening statements Monday, gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage right here on your front row seat to justice. When we come back, we're going to go on the docket and talk about the Jinx murder trial.